Yeah, I write uh, in Kannada and I'm widely translated into many Indian languages and uh, languages like uh, Spanish, French, German, Cebuano and Galician and Vietnamese and uh, many, many languages. Well, I have three collections of poems, um, all in Kannada and uh, the latest is some of the uh, trilingual uh, um, book with uh, in the sense with two translations, Spanish and the English with the Kannada, uh, which, which is called as uh, like this on the page, the song and this is the book. Uh, yeah, this actually has Kannada poems, the Spanish translation and the English along with that. Well, uh, I initially I started writing with short story, then I thought I will write a novel and which never happened and uh, um, I think I started writing poetry when I was uh, after the 12th class probably. By the first year of degree or second year of degree, I was already an upcoming poet and, uh, and I was extremely influenced by the Navya tradition of Kannada and I had to get out of it after which I uh, tried writing something different and in my third collection it was completely Mamta Sagar. Of course it was uh, any, nobody can write their own poems. Whatever we say is part of the tradition. Tradition again is not traditional. Uh, the, the sound pattern of the language, the rich tradition of the language that seeps into us in some way or the other. And somewhere you know, I mean uh, I could manage probably to produce uh, which, which gave me a space in my language. And as a writer, as a woman writer, I, uh, within the uh, genre of poetry, um, I'm very well received by women, by women critics, by, by critics. And my first collection, when it, was, it came out, one of the critics said that this doesn't seem to be, to be a thing written by a woman, because it, this doesn't have the sound of the bangles, fragrance of flowers. Well, I said, I don't wear that. So, uh, the whole notion of understanding women writing or writing by women through women's body or sexuality is something which I contest in all my poems. And understanding of the language itself or the making of the poem itself is again something which I write. I write a lot of love poems as well. And I have written poems to some of my friends who are no more, who died young due to certain things, due to political issues or due to accident or various kind of uh, things like um, after Godra and there, there was one woman Ahmadi who stayed in opposite my door and uh, she was, uh, she underwent domestic violence every day you know and at some point of time uh, she is a good friend of mine and uh, I helped her out in many situations and after two years I wrote a poem and gave it to her and told her, if you allow me to read it in the public, I will read this poem. Otherwise, this is personal. Then she said, if at all you read this poem, tell my story. Tell people that I am fine, then read the poem. And I have been doing that for Ahmadi. And I wrote one for uh, a person uh, who was killed by the police in Karnataka, who was, whose hands were tied and uh, he was named as a terrorist and he was killed. And one more for Chetan Dathar, who was an amazing theatre personality from Bombay, uh, Marathi playwright, actor and uh, um, what not, you know. After Chetan died when he was 42, he was a good friend of mine, I wrote for him. And one more uh, Spanish poet. When I started reading Pampa Kumaravyasa, you know, and the, the classic Kannada poets, and I realised that you cannot read them just like that sitting in a corner, uh, mum and uh, like, you know, you need to sound them. You need to read them aloud. Once I started reading them aloud, the drama began. And I started seeing many images which were so contemporary, like the war images, the violence images, the, uh, the, the tragedy or uh, the romance. Everything was so, so contemporary when I read Pampa or Kumaravyasa or Ranna or Janna or many of these, you know. Like, uh, I should tell you something. I was in Hyderabad. And Hyderabad has a small lane called uh, um, Badi Chodi. It's, it's a crowded lane and whoever came from Bangalore, I would take them for shopping. And I hate crowd. I couldn't cross the road. And I would start reciting Kumara Vyasas 
lines. Shrivani teyara rasanevi malara jiva pitana pitana. I could cross the road. And the sound and the rhythm and the chaos and everything I could handle. And it happened in Vietnam that uh, again the crossing road, you know. We were all, some 30 poets were supposed to go from one place to the other place. And I had boasted, I am an Indian, I am used to all this traffic and all this, you know. That day the Vietnamese girl did not come and they all said, well, Mamta, now you have to help us out. Again, you know, I started reciting a classical poem and the traffic stopped and we just went. I mean, I, this happened, but it was fun. Uh, poetry, why I am telling all this is, poetry has some magical kind of a, uh, thing which happens, you know, with poetry. It could be anybody's poem. Um, when you start reciting it, your body starts working, your, your voice starts working, the images you produce just goes beyond the canvas for the listener and also for the reader and uh, you get involved in it. Uh, for me, poetry is everything, you know, I can, I can just do anything with poetry.